capital is facing a big crisis. Um, it has lost lucrative ways of where to invest and extract revenue, profit. So it is looking to nature as a new place to extract profit. Um, the financialization of nature really is something that draws the natural world into the capitalist production system. Turning nature into something that can be traded, that can, from which money can be extracted, and from which financial papers can be created that are then traded on financial markets. So the idea behind financialization in essence is expanding the base of production into the natural world. You could say, well, financialization of nature is a theoretical concept that's being discussed at the UN, by the World Bank and elsewhere. So do we have to worry much about it? And I think, yes, we do, because it's not only a theoretical concept, it's also something that hits people who depend on nature. Um, Forest-dependent communities in the global south find that with an infrastructure project that takes away part of their livelihood, Another project comes that says, for the damage that this infrastructure project does to your land, we evict you, but we also need to have green infrastructure. So we need the other part of your land um, to make up for that, to offset the damage that we do with the big infrastructure project. And then people in the global south, but also here in the north, lose twice with this financialization of infrastructure. It gives us the illusion that we can continue to use land as excessively as we have in the past for unnecessary infrastructure that serves financial interests but not people and do that in some green way by saying the damage that we have done in one place has been offset somewhere else. The reality is that the ecological and above all the social damage that's done in one place cannot be offset, it will remain. And in another place people will lose more. So financialization of nature already has a very very significant effect on people who directly depend on the land. Very much like a lot of the carbon projects um, had in uh, when the project, the, when the, the, the concept of carbon markets was introduced. We see the same pattern, the same impact on communities as we saw with the carbon market. One of the countries that's pioneering this financialization of nature is Brazil. Brazil for many years had the most progressive forest legislation. Even though it was losing a lot of Amazon forest, it had very progressive legislation. The problem was the implementation. In 2013, the Brazilian government revised the forest law, the forest code. And one of the changes was that they said all the landowners who had illegally been cutting forest in the past have two options. Either they restore the forest that they cut illegally, or they go to an environmental exchange, like a financial exchange, called the Bolsa Rio Verde, the Green Exchange in Rio de Janeiro, and they buy a piece of paper there. They buy a certificate that says some other forest owner, somewhere else in the Amazon, is restoring the land for me that I cut illegally, and I can continue to expand my soya plantations at the, at the frontier of deforestation. A lot of the land grabbing in this arc, in this um, frontier of deforestation is illegal. A lot of it takes away and grabs indigenous people's land. And the financialization aspect here is that we see that an environmental law, the forest code, has been changed in such a way that it gives impunity to the illegality that was done before and allows the landowner to not restore the damage that they had done or claim that they have restored the damage that they have done by going to some financial exchange and buying a piece of paper. Where does that piece of paper come from? From way up 
the rivers in the Amazon where no road, no waterway, nothing is and no interest in cutting the forest. But somebody got a concession there knowing that now there is an exchange and if they don't cut the legally allowed area that land has a value because they can offer it on the financial exchange for somebody to cut more than the law allows. This is one of the most advanced examples of financialization and it shows not only who are the big beneficiaries, those who destroy nature, but also the risk that financialization poses to changing in a paradigmatic way our environmental legislation. We risk in the future, and maybe not even only our environmental legislation, but the core of our democratic principles. Because up until now, before the law, at least in theory, everybody was equal. The theory is different from the practice, we know that, but that is still the theory. With changes like this one in Brazil to the forest law, we're changing the theory. We're changing um, the theory in a way that says, not everybody is equal anymore. Those who have the money to go and pollute more than the law allows, or to go and destroy more land than the law, allow, than the law allows, they can do so and still say, I'm in compliance with the law. That's a very far-reaching change, which we should reflect very carefully on whether we want to let that happen. But that is how financialization very abstract term, manifests itself in the reality.